All right, so I think it's definitely about time that we had another Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial. And if we're staying on the wave of things that are trendy in 2019, this is definitely one of them. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to do this sort of light beam paintbrush sort of effect that is really popular, particularly on Instagram with this one account called Blotter Media. This account has over 1 million followers and a bunch of their videos have well into the millions of views. And that is because of the creative ways that they utilize this editing technique. And notice that I'm calling it a technique and not an effect because you can actually do multiple different effects using this one technique. Now, before we get into this, I do have some bad news as well as some good news. The bad news is that doing this in Final Cut with this method, which is by far the best, is not free. The good news is that it only costs about 30 bucks. In order to do this technique, we'll be using the FCPX Brush Glow Drawing Tool for Final Cut Pro 10 from Pixel Film Studios. And no, this video is not sponsored. I actually just stumbled across this plugin the other day, tried it out, and I really like it. And again, it only costs $30. And now with all of that out of the way, let's get started. Okay, so here we are in Final Cut Pro 10. This is the clip that we'll be using for today's tutorial. As you can see, I've already added a color grade using the basic LUT for my Vintage Look 2 LUT pack. If you're interested in checking it out, it'll be down in the description below. Now, the first thing I wanna direct your attention to is my project settings. As you can see, I'm using 1920 by 1080 at 24P, and I'll explain why those are my settings in just a moment. So once you have purchased and installed the plugin, which I will have linked down below, you'll wanna go to your titles and generator sidebar, and underneath generators, you'll have this Pixel Film Studio brush glow and you'll notice that there's a few different options. Now in theory if you have a powerful enough computer you can use this plugin in timelines up to 4k and 5k. Now I do have a pretty good computer and I tried using the plugin in 4k but even still it was very laggy so I recommend if you don't have that fast of a machine you should use 1080p and it works no problem. So step number one is to click and drag our generator over top of our footage and we'll cut it down to the exact size that we need. Now that that's done I'll go Go ahead and close my browser that way we can see what's going on a little bit better we'll make sure that we're selected on our plugin and we'll go up here to this little icon and this will bring up all our options Within draw mode, we do have a couple of options. We've got frame by frame and add to subsequent frames. Basically, if you select add to subsequent frames, this will copy and paste your drawings throughout every frame that the generator is stretched over your timeline. Now, we don't really want that because that won't give us the effect that we're looking for. We want something more natural that moves a little bit. So frame by frame is what we will use for our effect. I'll go ahead and draw a quick doodle here just to see what the line looks like. I think there's a little bit too much of a prism blur on there, so I'm just gonna hit one instead of three. That looks a lot better. Also, I think our line is a little bit thick as I will be using it to outline our sunglasses. So I'm gonna turn this down to about eight. Let's see what that looks like. Let's try six. I think that's about right for what we're doing. I'll go ahead and clear the current frame and we're ready to begin. By navigating up here and clicking on this little drop down arrow, I will zoom in to 400%. This will just make it a little bit easier to be more accurate with our drawings. So I'll go ahead and start outlining our sunglasses here and we don't need to be perfect, but I will take my time on these first couple of frames so you can see what I'm doing. Now do keep in mind that this is a little bit laggier than normal just because I'm recording my screen as I'm doing this tutorial, but we're gonna hit the right arrow key once we're happy with it and this will bring us to the next frame and we'll do the same thing. Again, right arrow key and we're on to the next frame. I did previously apply a speed ramp to this footage, which is why it jumped so many frames within that one right click. And I'll continue doing a few more frames until I'm happy with how it looks. Now let's say you've made a mistake and you want to erase, you can go into your eraser controls and turn up the radius just a little bit, hold command on your keyboard and go back over your mistake and this will take it away. Now we're almost done here. I'm just gonna do a few more frames. Okay, so now that the hands are starting to come off of the sunglasses and away from the face, I'm gonna slowly start lowering this brush size on each frame until it's faded out. So right now I'm gonna go down to five, hit enter, and now our brush will be slightly thinner and smaller. Again, I'm gonna draw over this frame and it doesn't have to be perfect. Next frame, and then again, I'm gonna lower this to four and hit enter. And you'll notice now it's even thinner. Next frame, brush size three, hit enter. Next frame, brush size two and hit enter. 
start drawing and you'll see now we're getting really thin. One more frame, brush size down to one, hit enter. And this will be the last frame in which we're outlining the sunglasses. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back up here to this little dropdown and hit fit and this will fit our image to the screen. I'll scroll back to the beginning and let's see how it looks. So that is pretty much exactly what I want. She puts the sunglasses onto her face and they're all lit up. And then as she pulls her hands away, they fade out. But this little effect isn't all that exciting. So I do wanna take it one step further. I'm gonna go up to window and bring back our browser. I'm gonna navigate over here and grab another one of these 1080p plugins and drag it over top of what we've done. Once again, I'll cut it down to size using our blade tool and close our browser window. So what I'll do now is skip ahead a few frames until our sunglasses start fading out. I think that right there was the first frame that they started fading. I'm gonna select it and then I'm gonna go into my brush options and I'm gonna change the color to this yellowish orange. And now I'm gonna bring the brush size down to one. I'm gonna zoom back into 400% so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm gonna draw a little line in here and a little line in here. And you'll see what I'm doing in just a moment. So I'm gonna go next frame. I'm gonna make the brush size number two now. Make a little scribble, a little scribble. Next frame, brush size three. I'm gonna start making this a bit bigger now. Next frame, brush size four, making this bigger and bigger. Now I think there's a little bit too much of a prism on this once again. So I'm gonna scroll down to the prism option and I'm gonna bring that down to just one. Okay, so now onto the next frame, I'm gonna raise our brush size up to, let's say seven. And basically now you could probably tell that I'm drawing little flames inside the sunglasses. I think this will have a nice cool effect. Now I'm just gonna keep repeating this process for a whole bunch of frames until I feel like it's long enough. I'll speed this part up and get back to you guys when I'm finishing up. Now, as I'm going along here, I'm making all of the flame sizes different in each frame because I want it to have a lot of variation. You don't want it to be the same size the whole time because then it will just look kind of boring. You want it to sort of flicker and flash big and small throughout the video. Okay, so we're getting pretty close to the end here. And what I'm gonna do is each frame like we did before is make the brush size just a bit lower and lower each time. So I'm gonna hit right key on my keyboard and make the brush size five. Okay, just like so. Right key on the keyboard again and make the brush size four now. You can see our fire is getting thinner and thinner. Right key once again, one. I'm just gonna make it a little line. Okay, we'll zoom back out, go to the beginning and let's see how it looks. So that little effect you just saw right there took me exactly 17 minutes to make. And that is with me going really slow and explaining what I'm doing so you can see and understand. When it comes to using this plugin and learning an effect like this, there's only so much I can do with explaining and spoon feeding how it works. You really just gotta download it and try it out for yourself. Play with it until it makes sense and you understand it. But it really is simple once you get the hang of it. You simply just draw on your frame, Go to the next frame and keep drawing. Next frame, keep drawing, next frame, keep drawing until you have a sequence of frames with a drawing on it that make up a video. There are endless possibilities of things you can do with an editing technique like this. So I suggest you head over to Blotter Media and check out the type of stuff that they've been doing. It's really impressive and I can't believe the amount of time that they spend editing like dance choreography videos. It just looks like a huge pain in the butt. But like anything else, if you put in the time and the effort, people do really seem to love the end result. Personally, I think it's really cool and I do enjoy putting it in my videos, but I am curious to see how long it lasts being a trendy thing. If it's gonna become played out or overdone, if people are gonna get sick of it, but I guess only time will tell. But on that note, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you haven't already, follow me on Instagram at daniel.schiffer. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.